In this video, the learner will use relationships between arcs and chords of circles to solve problems. First, we're going to remind ourselves of some vocabulary. A chord is a segment with endpoints on a circle. So here we have segment XY. The endpoints X and Y are on that circle. We would name that chord just as we would name any segment, segment XY. We would say segment XY is a chord of the circle. Consider the question, would a diameter be considered a chord? Now we have an arc. An arc of a circle is a piece of the circumference of a circle. Remember the circumference is all the way around. So an arc would be just a piece of that. So from X to Y around the edge of the circle, that would be our arc. We would name it with the arc symbol. So we have the endpoints of the arc, X and Y, and then the arc symbol. We would describe that arc as a minor arc of the circle. What's the difference between a major and minor arc? I want you to answer that question. Lastly, a semicircle is an arc whose endpoints are those of a diameter. So if we look at this arc here, its endpoints X and Y would be a diameter of that circle, which means it would pass through the center. We would need to name that arc with three points. So we would name that arc X, C, Y. Our first theorem um, is dealing with congruent arcs. If we have two minor arcs, they're going to be congruent if and only if their corresponding chords are congruent. So in this picture, we have arc QR is congruent to arc ST. Which segments will be congruent in this circle? According to this theorem, segment QR, which is chord QR, and chord ST would be congruent. Consider this these two examples down here. In this example, we have two congruent circles. I want you to find the measure of PQ. In circle W over here, arc RS is congruent to arc TV. Notice that arc symbol and that notation here. And I want you to find the length of segment RS. The next two theorems have to do with bisecting arcs and chords. Let's take a look at what bisecting an arc looks like. In this uh, diagram here, this segment FH bisects the chord GJ. So we can see here arc JH and HG are congruent. So we would say FH is an arc bisector. With that said, our first theorem is if a diameter or radius of a circle is perpendicular to a chord, then that chord and its corresponding arc are bisected. So in this picture here, we can see diameter AB is perpendicular to chord XY. So this diameter makes a right angle with chord XY. Therefore, X Z, which Z is this point of the intersection, and ZY are congruent, and arc XB and arc BY are congruent. This next th theorem says the perpendicular bisector of a chord is a diameter. So here, if we know that AB is a perpendicular bisector of chord XY. So we can see right now that it's perpendicular. If we are told that it is a perpendicular bisector, then we would know AB has to be a diameter of circle C. What I want you to do is I want you to compare and contrast these two theorems. Lastly, we have some examples. This first example, in circle S, the measure of arc PQR is 98. Find the measure of arc PQ. And in circle S, find the measure of segment PR.
Lastly, we have this picture of a stained glass window. Diameter GH is 30 inches long and cord KM is 22 inches long. Your task is to find the length of J to L.